This has been Tarek on Dawa. Assalamu alaikum. Do you really want to learn? Do you want to actually learn from people who you observe online? You wouldn't be acting like this if the person was like directly in front of you. Possibly you could, depends on how rude you actually are in person. But today's podcast is going to be talking about those people who uh, interrupt others or, you know, part of the whole uh, cancel culture too, just like challenging questions or, you know, taking things out of context and really trying to cause problems for people who are basically just trying to spread the knowledge of Islam. I'm talking about Muslims. I'm not necessarily talking about the non-Muslims. I mean, we expect that um, that people who are not Muslim are going to have an issue with Islam, are going to have a problem and be irritated that videos of people shaking their things and, and, and singing and dancing is interrupted by somebody talking about the hellfire or talking about the Day of Judgment or some aspect of Islamic law. We're not apologizing. The reason that we're on these platforms in the first place is because they have such a huge number of people on them. And we remind ourselves first, the Muslims, and then, you know, we do want to educate people about our faith. When I get these kinds of people from the non-Muslims, I tell them, you can, oh, you can always scroll. You can even block me if you never want to see my face again. It's easy enough to do. It's easier than leaving, you know, a rude comment that takes you at least a minute or two to compose. <laughs> but I'm talking about the Muslims. I'm talking about people who uh, distrust um, the people who are trying to give da'wah and, and talk about Islam. And, um, and, you know, kind of just interrupt or challenge them and make it difficult for them, not very motivating for them to continue to teach online. I was at an educational Islamic function um, and I was listening to sets of lectures. You know, you go to these things and there's a set of lectures um, by Muslim teachers. And I brought my notebook and my pen, as I always do. But the lights were turned down so low that I could barely see my book. And I actually had to use my cell phone light. <laughs> I didn't have a light on my cell phone. I think I had a different kind of cell phone uh, where I just had to use the light from the screen uh, to note down uh, points of interest and, and you know, pivotal quotes and things like that from each teacher. And as I took my notes, first I was annoyed. Like if they, if we're learning something here, why are the lights turned down so low? I can't, I can't, uh, I can't take my notes. And then I realized as I looked around, I'm the only person writing notes. <laughs> there aren't anybody else writing notes except for me. Uh, this is my training. I've been studying the Dean formally for over 10 years and I always take notes. Um, I have books of notes. I've been trained to pay attention and note down what I've been taught. It's part of my learning process. I don't consider that lectures are entertainment. And unfortunately, in some places, they actually have been considered entertainment. Like people get so excited to hear the voice of a certain person and they will just come and like, I can't believe I'm in the same room with so-and-so. And it's like, this is a fellow Muslim. This is a human being. The only reason that you think that they're better than you is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has influenced so many more people through what they say, but they're still a human being. They're a human being at the end of the day. Uh, that lectures Islamic knowledge is entertainment. It's such a strange idea. How is someone going to author a lecture, travel to a place, get up in front of a bunch of people, deliver the lecture and have people retain a tiny portion of what was said if they remember anything at all. Part of it could be, you know, recording. You know, you're going to take a recording and you're going to, you know, you keep that or you're going to post it so other people can benefit. A lot of the places, they won't let you take videos anymore, right? They won't take you because what happens is people take things out of context or, or the person actually has like a brand image that they want to preserve and the videos that they produce of their content are the only ones that they want out there because they're of high quality and nothing is taken out of context. So that's a whole other topic. <laughs> but it has a lot to do with the haste online, right? I know I shouldn't expect people online commenting on my videos or anybody else's videos to have much of an attention span. But I don't expect to be interrupted or insulted in the comments for relaying what I've been taught. I say over and over again when I teach, this is from my notes. I literally show the book sometimes. I'll list the book material uh, and that I am pursuing a bachelor's of Islamic studies. And that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing it uh, in a way to study. Perhaps it's mirroring. Maybe, they're, you know, because they themselves, they just make content spewing whatever pops into their heads and they expect that I'm doing that or other people are doing that. Um, I don't know. And on, honestly, often, and anybody who's been approached this way online knows often that, individual, those people who are really argumentative and, 
and insulting. They have zero content. They are not contributing anything but negativity. I will explain a concept in one of my videos less than a minute long and people stop to ask a question that is answered later on in the same video. <laughs> I often think that what they do is read the caption, refuse to actually watch the video or listen to it and just respond to the caption. Now I'm in, I'm in digital marketing and social media marketing. So I, I will write a caption that will get your attention to make you watch the video. So I might write something in the caption that does not reflect the entire content. I mean, it can't really, obviously it's just a few words. It's very frustrating because then, you know, people will ask questions and I, I want to answer their questions, but basically I just say, well, could you watch the rest of the video? And they say, I don't have time to watch the rest of the video. I don't have time to look through your videos and find this topic. I don't have time to look for your playlist. I don't have to. So people are just so hasty. They just don't have any time for this and they just need my, my answer right now. So I stop what I'm doing and write an answer that could be found if they just watch the whole 50 second video, <laughs> subhanAllah. I guess because, you know, I'm trying to assume the best. Um, alhamdulillah, like I, I, I tend towards pessimism and negativity and, and it hasn't really helped having my videos online, especially TikTok, obviously, uh, to, to, you know, to keep my positivity up. But sometimes people ask me about something that I've already explained. So I point them to a video or a playlist that I created because I've been on, uh, I've been on YouTube for a lot longer, but then uh, TikTok and, and Instagram with my educational content for at least three years now. And, uh, you know, obviously I've covered a lot of different topics. And so sometimes uh, people will ask me about something that I've already explained. Now, it wouldn't make any sense for me to make a new video because the knowledge is fresh, you know, like last year or six months ago or three months ago. And, um, you know, I'm reading directly from notes and, and, and like that. So I tell them, okay, well, here's this video. Oh, I don't have time to watch that. Just answer the question. Each video is about a minute long, less than a minute usually, because I want to try to make sure to, you know, uh, summarize the information in a concise way. A playlist might be up to five videos. You seriously don't have five minutes. <laughs> maybe you don't. Okay. I'll, I'll just assume that maybe you don't, but I find that if people want to make priority, if they want to really be aware of, you know, the knowledge and they're, they're sincere and they want to, then they're going to, they'll make time. You can make time for that. Five minutes is, is not very much time. I assume that people want to learn when they ask questions. Generally, questioners want to learn something. That's the whole point of a question, right? So that's probably my main mistake, right? Often people do not want to learn. They don't want to learn anything from you. They want to challenge you with a question that they don't think that you know the answer to. I've had a couple of those. I'm like, uh-huh, <laughs> this is a question that's designed to, um, to challenge me, which is great because, you know, sometimes I might have to just re review something I learned or, or look something up that I've forgotten or, or something, which is great, which I, I love anyway. It's better, better for me a sin on you, but a benefit for me, maybe. <laughs> um, they want to offer their opinion and respond to their own question with comment after comment after comment. I've had people write khutbas out in my comment section, replying to themselves. They might start out with a question or they might just comment and they just, they want to use my, my videos as a platform for what they have. And I often, you know, sincerely comment to them that saying, you have a lot to say about this topic please produce your own content. You know, it, uh, I mean, you know, the more contents, the more people, the more views I get, which is not a big deal for me, but I'm just thinking, you know, it's more edge for that person to actually produce content and fill up their channel with uh, beneficial videos than kind of hijacking my, my comment section. And then often this comes from a uh, lots of different kinds of Muslims, but waiting for my answer so that they can refute it using my comments section as a platform for their very strange understanding of Islam or weird worldview. This, this happens often too. Well, what, what do you say about this? What do you say about that? Of the, of the questions that I absolutely refuse to respond to are what is my opinion about so-and-so? I hate that kind of question because it doesn't, it's, it's of no help. Each of us has been given our own mind, our own reasoning, our own understanding about Islam. And we learn and we go by what we learn and we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us to the correct authentic knowledge and we expect that Allah will guide us to correct authentic knowledge. But when you are asking like what's my personal opinion about, you know, a person, individual, and uh, you know, whatever, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm not going to give you my personal opinion about it because 
I, I'm, I'm not your advisor. I'm not your personal co- life coach here. You, you, everybody has to make their own decision about things, you know? Subhanallah, there are people that are very concerned that what they study is authentic, and this is, a, this is a, an important concern. But asking me what my opinion about it, it's just, it sounds like a way to start some type of, uh, some type of little, you know, fight, you know, between two groups or, oh, she said this and let's go see what, the, you know, she or he said about her and like that back and forth. And, oh, do you know what she said about you? Like this kind of thing. It, it sounds like that type of, it sounds like it's one, it wants to begin like that. And, and I, I don't want, I don't want anything to begin like that. I don't want to feed into that. So, um, of the questions that I absolutely refuse to respond to is what do you think, what's your personal opinion about a thing? Because, I don't find that it's that it's helpful. Um, I don't have, as far as I know, I don't have a dedicated group of like super fans or or students that will hang on my every word and do whatever I say. Anyhow, so even if I had that, then I wouldn't say, okay, this is how you should feel. This is how you should believe. This is how you should think. If someone's asking me about a belief or or something and they they're confused about it, then I will say, well, this is the correct belief. But I'm not going to tell somebody my personal opinion about another individual. Um, not to mention that 99% of the time there are people I've never met. So I, I can't form an opinion about them anyway. And it wouldn't be something that I would share unless the person was asking me if I thought that they were somebody that they were going to marry because then it becomes incumbent upon you to actually share only if you actually know the person. So it's totally out of context and it doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to, to ask these kind of questions or, or answer them. A basic fact about uh, teaching online and and learning from people online and even on TikTok, like a lot of people will say, well, you know, you just can't learn anything on TikTok. You can get a lot of beneficial reminders there. You can get book recommendations and you can actually learn different points of fit and things like that, especially if you're looking like a playlist or something. Um, you can actually learn, but you have to trust the person that you're learning from first. And uh, it's like what, um, you know, my teacher Abu Toba, he used to say that when a student would argue with him about a point, he would say, if you don't trust me, don't learn from me, you know, and it's similar to what I say. Like, if you don't, if you don't want to hear what I'm having to say, then you don't have to listen. You know, you can always scroll or block me or whatever. Sometimes people will interpret this as arrogance. You know, it's not arrogance to refuse to bring a proof or, or list a book that you're learning from. It's usually a waste of energy because you can tell that people asking for Dalil often have no Dalil for behaving in the way that they do. For those who are sincerely interested, they can often ask their own teachers or search elsewhere online to discover the answer or the source. Sometimes I'm saying things that are easily Googleable, Googleable, if that's the word. You can you can search up pretty much everything that I say in my videos and find, you know, an exact hadith, I from Quran or whatever. It's, you know, my study of Islam is not that deep that I need to bring like a quote from a scholar or a fatwa or something like that. Yes, I often post a video of a book or actually write out the title of the book, but there's no time on TikTok or other apps to explain each and every issue that I bring when I teach. Long form videos on YouTube, there is time for that, but the hasty people, they're not in my comments on there. They're on TikTok and Instagram. So you can just scroll, can't you? You know, it doesn't take more time and energy to stop what you're doing, type out something aggressive and rude than to merely swipe away. This is what I ask a lot of people. So if you are challenged by something that you hear uh, a teacher say, on, on, on any of the apps and, uh, and you don't know where it comes from or whatever, then you should look it up, you know, just leave the app, go look it up, ask someone in, in your area that knows something. And, and then you may come back for clarification, but if you are responding directly to the video, there's no time for, you know, good assumptions. There's no time for trust or, or, you know, um, or even, you know, even just respecting the fact that the teacher has taken their time out of their day to teach you something, then it's better for you to just swipe away. Swipe away, do your own research, go look things up. Um, I often tell people to go Google things. Uh, and, you know, it's it's important for us to use our own minds and to, and to trust uh, our teachers or learn from someone else. The amusing thing about this counterproductive commenting is that they, they, you know, they paused and they interacted with my video that they hate and they're going to see more of it, right? The app thinks that they like me. <laughs> the algorithm thinks that the person actually enjoys my content because they stopped and commented. So, uh, so this is another thing that's really, uh, really funny about these interactions that people will come on the page, they'll stop what they're doing, comment something rude and leave or whatever. They won't block me. They'll continue to comment if I respond. 
So they've they've taken time out of their day, and um, and this benefits you know people like myself because it it drives up the views. People see your content more, but at the same time, uh, it is really a waste of your time. So uh, we don't have much time, do we? We don't have much time. We have the the, the situation where all of us are going to face death. We're going to reach the grave at some point. And do we really want to be wasting any time at all, um, you know, asking questions with a bad intention and slowing up the process of dawah? This has been Tarek on Dawah. Assalamu alaikum.